All right. So hi everyone. So we are, you know, the mic is here. So we are in the hosters and we are going to present our project today. So this is Pierre and Tim. And we started this business about two years ago. So we are doing, uh, we are hosting free software. We're doing free software as a service, as we say. And uh, today we're going to explain uh, how we do it, why we do it, and uh, what exactly we do. So we're going to focus more on the how, because I think that's what's interesting you here. So <clears throat> the idea is that we started from a statement, so we all love free software. We all promote free software, but it can be really a pain in the ass to host it. So if I'm a business, for instance, and I want a cloud for sharing my files, calendar, etc., if I go to Dropbox, it's super easy. I just have this sign-up button, fill the form, and then I've got everything set up. If I want to use Nextcloud, for instance, it's not the same. So I've got, uh, so I just click on Get Nextcloud, and I get this Install button, Download button. So I have to install it myself, and that's like really a bottleneck for 99% of the people, and that's uh, those people that really need it, and that we want to help them. So we're trying to do this intermediary role of hosting it for yourself and integrating it so it's, um, you get just this sign-up button and you can get your cloud, your chat, your WordPress, whatever you want. And that's pretty much our goal. So as if you go to the Nextcloud, Nextcloud website, for instance, you get this sign-up button. And our dream is that you get this sign-up button on, on every free software. Like it could be in your search, of course, but it could be on other business. So that's really the idea to, yeah, to provide easy access to, um, to this. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the vision. So now I'm going to let uh, Pierre talk about more the technical aspect of it and uh, how we make it happen. Yes, so um, if we, you just saw the conference about Chaton, and if you think as Chaton as a free software, uh, they are writing the draft of the protocol of how Chaton will be developed. And uh, the project we are developing for Indie Hosters, which is called uh, Libre SH or SH is uh, like an implementation of this protocol. And so some chatons would prefer to use Debian and others uh, Ubuntu. Windows is not allowed because <laughs> chaton is just free software, right? And uh, Libre SH is an implementation. And as an implementation, we have strong opinion about how this job should be done. And we did a bet uh, three years ago when we started to use Docker. And luckily for us, it's actually broadly adopted nowadays. And um, okay, right now, uh, LibreSage Libre is just on one server, but uh, the idea is to transition to uh, some stuff like Kubernetes and be able to deploy it on clusters. And so I will show you how uh, it's easy to install. Does it work like this? Uh, easy to install uh, your own LibreSH. Uh, and uh, so how you can bootstrap easily your own chaton for you, your family, your association, your small and medium business, or whatever. Okay, so this is the live demo time on the command line. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Uh, so I just, uh, I just start by creating a VM on a cloud provider. And this is in the readme of uh, libsh. Uh, but there are also instructions to install it on bare metal. And then you are free to make instructions for whatever you use. But to make it easier, uh, I just use a VM on uh, DigitalOcean. OK. And so, so what I'm doing now, it's actually uh, fully installing a libsh uh, system. So now I will get an IP for this server. And what I will do is to uh, point all my domains to this IP. Like it's an important step uh, for the demo to show you how we generate uh, automatically uh, our uh, certificates using Let's Encrypt. So here is the IP. I go to my DNS provider and it's all full. But Okay. So in some minutes, the DNS will be propagated, and I will wait until now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we rely uh, heavily on um, Docker. 
and uh, I will show you okay so I'm on the VM yeah I should do <laughs> We still have to manage a bit better the, the rights. <laughs> so here is one part of the file system called uh, system. And this is where we install all the, the modules of the, the system. And uh, so the main module is the uh, load balancer. This is uh, where all the traffic, the HTTP traffic is entering. So we use HAProxy as a load balancer and we have we use containers, and there is a little companion that is taking care of uh, Let's Encrypt. So I will uh, start by installing my load balancer. Uh, so I will. Uh, so a module is uh, basically just a Git repo. In the hosters, proxy. Okay, so I go there, and then I just leave or start. So I just started my proxy. I can consult the journal. And what you see is that it's pulling some uh, Docker images. Uh, and basically, everything, like all the packages, like there are user packages, like uh, web applications and modules. And everything is a Git repo containing a Docker Compose at the moment. But the idea is to migrate it to Kubernetes at one point. Okay, so if we look at the journal, it's pulling images. And that's why it's a lot better to use a VM <laughs> because uh, this VM has a, a good, um, good download link, whereas here I would not be able to do this demonstration. Okay, so it looks like everything is running. Ah, yeah, actually, my chat. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> So everything should be running, and if I libre PS, well, the, the output is not really pretty, but everything is up, so it's kind of finished. Um, uh, so I just want to check that this IP got propagated in the meantime. So if I ping cloud, uh, no, sorry, yeah. Ah, no, sorry. Uh, okay, so my IP is propagated, and now I'm ready to deploy applications. So, what do you want for your association? Nextcloud. Okay, super. <laughs> Let's install Nextcloud. So, it should be as easy as libre provision. Uh, so you specify a parameter called u, u for URL, and you put the URL, so let's say cloud.lib.sh. Uh, you specify the application, so it's github.com slash indie hosters. We'll migrate to GitLab soon, but it takes time, you know. Uh, next cloud. And I will start it right away. And there is one more flag which is called buy. It's just to buy the domain name if I didn't buy it yet. But yeah, I already bought this domain name, so I don't need it. Okay, there are some warnings, but you know, you can safely uh, ignore the warnings. <laughs> 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 now, it's just that normally there is a, an email backend and it provisions an email automatically for each instance. So then Nextcloud will be able to send emails. So this instance of Nextcloud will not be able to send emails. But that's fine for the demonstration. And so if I go to data domains and uh, to cloud libresage and to libre journal, again, it's just pulling some uh, Docker images. And here, actually, we're a bit lucky because if you see here, this means that it's an official Docker Hub uh, image. And it's great because it means like we don't have to manage this package. Well, actually, we did the Docker image for Nextcloud, but uh, <laughs> we, we don't really, we have many people uh, maintaining it, not uh, us only. Okay, so looks like things are working. 
If I libre PS, everything seems up. I can libre logs to see what's happening. Yeah, it looks like nice. And so, we have an xCloud instance. And with the HTTPS certificate. And now we, we need a chat also, right? Because chat is trendy. We don't have matrix yet, but. Uh, <laughs> so we can also install uh, chat.libre.sh with the application uh, hosted on github.com slash indie hosters slash rocket chat. Ah no, sorry. Indie hosters, uh, where is that? Yeah. Okay, some warning to ignore. <laughs> and and if I go to the no, not yet. So it's pulling the image and set up a rocket chat. So it's quite nice. Um, so I just wanted to show that we have a GitHub re uh, account. And there we have all the package, packages that we uh, provide with uh, our Libre uh, SH. And of course, you are more than wel uh, welcome if you want to come and help on this part. And actually, what we want is uh, people using it. And I was really happy to receive my first pull request some months ago to uh, modify the mail system to make it a bit better. And it's really uh, as a <laughs> because you start your code and you don't know and somebody is using it, so it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you go, here it's our page and it's all our projects and we can create new packages and there is a bit of documentation. And okay. That's it. And maybe if we check, uh, blah, 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 blah. yes. So we have a rocket chat instance. Nice. <laughs> so, all right. So now just to conclude, maybe we're going to talk a bit about the next steps. So as you see, the infrastructure is working pretty well. We are still improving it, of course, and you can help us, as he, as he mentioned. And now the idea of uh, LibreSH is, um, <clears throat> so the next step will be to, um, to migrate to Kubernetes at one point. And also the um, main step that we have to work on now is uh, the identity management. Because for now, it's, uh, we, need, we want single sign-on. We want like, uh, people to manage their users and stuff. So that's really the next step we're working on. If people are, uh, have skills in LDAP, we're looking for it. <laughs> Actually, or maybe we're talking with Nextcloud also, maybe if you can help us on this. So that's like our original, the next step. And with that, we could have something similar in some ways in like Google Apps, for instance. You could just click on it and boom, installing. Like as, as easy as Google Apps. So that's, uh, that's really the step we want to go to do. And of course, in the authors, it's just not only the two of us. Like we really, really wish that people use this infrastructure, improve it, work on it and that we all work together to have many indie hosters or whatever you want to call it, or at least like different chatons that are using the same infrastructure than us. So if you want to join, to join you're welcome. If you want to use it, you're welcome. If you want to, if you have questions also, you're welcome too. <laughs> and yeah, we are. Okay, thank you. Somebody has a project that wants to propose to be hosted. Yeah. Can contribute to create an image to, to host. So um, the question is: um, I have a free software project, and I want it to be packaged by indie hosters. Uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, we can help on that. We actually did it for some projects, and um, so either we have a user that wants it and pay for the development of this image or maybe you as a free software you have a bit of funding and you help us by paying some time to uh, to help us to package it and so it's usually how we do it because it's difficult for us just to package it there's no documentation on how yes 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 it's uh, there is a documentation if you want exactly this is the thing you can do it by yourself and you we can help you on this and if you ask us to do it 
like either we do it for free or not and uh, we can uh, work around some solution and uh, if you go to yes on our repo slash application Ah, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't work like this. So, applications. So here you have uh, a rough documentation, I would say, but basically it's like a Docker Compose that expose a service called Web that expose a port 80, and this is the minimum viable. Then you can have a little install script, and it's recommended to have like a pre-backup script to uh, dump the database, and then we take care of the rest. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. How do you guys deal with security updates? Okay, so we use CoreOS, and so I don't know if you're a bit familiar with them, but their tagline is securing the internet, and so they have all the plumbing, and with Docker, actually, this is the the nice part, is that if we want to update a server. We basically do a core OS update. They have a mechanism, and so on. I will not enter the details. And uh, then, actually, whenever there is a security issue, we just go to the. So, to update this uh, chat, I would do like this. And what's happening behind the scene? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. What's happening behind the scene is that it's doing a git pool to, uh, to have the latest version of the repo, and then a docker pool to have the latest uh, version of the images, and then restarting the service. So it's really easy to update, and um, this is on the paper. Then hopefully the docker image handles well also the update. But this is the, the goal of the docker images. And so some are doing it well, and some not yet, but yeah, it's the, yeah. How does this compare to Sandstorm or Iron Okay, so the question is, how does it compare to Sandstorm or Wynohost? Let's say that Sandstorm and Wynohost is an implementation of Chaton. And we are another one. And so we have different ideas about uh, what's nice or not. And for instance, uh, on Sandstorm, uh, it's really nice. But I don't really like their API that is uh, standstormish, and I think the web should be open and use standard API or plugins. Uh, Why you know host? Uh, it's nice, but maybe not yet made for big uh, hosting uh, and doesn't use Docker. Well, like everybody is free, like, and uh, I prefer Docker, and <laughs> that's it. So to do backups, uh, we have a little module called backups. And uh, what it does, it loops through all the domains. And for each domain, if there is a pre-backup script, it runs it, it, it runs it. And so usually the pre-backup is a um, dump, a database dump. So we, we plan to move this inside the Docker image of the database, but this is another topic. Uh, so then there is no pre-backup script anymore. So we just do like a little dump, and then uh, zip, uh, not zip, but use duplicity. Um, yes, use duplicity to push it to a distant server through SSH. And then on this server, there is actually a process that is uh, putting the backups, the old backups, as read-only for this user. So if either server got compromised, it cannot erase both uh, sides. And so there is a package for that also. Yes? Yes, it's, the question is uh, if, I can, uh, if we can handle uh, aliases. And so, actually, uh, so, yeah, you probably need want alias on the cloud. And, yeah. So, actually, yeah, we use a, 
sysadmin paradigm called uh, discovery registration. So it means that uh, our microservices, the web server, are registering themselves in a central database. And this is all they do. And to do it, like this registering to the database, currently is just starting a, uh, an Nginx container with the on variable virtual host. So it's just like, uh, oh, hi, I have a little, yeah. And then on the other side, there is HA proxy that is listening to every new containers created that have this on variable. And so, <laughs> and that's it. So then uh, it could be aliased from the outside and it would get an HTTPS certificate also. And it, could be it would be wired by the load balancer to the right web service. Uh, you mentioned um, that Kubernetes uh, fetched over Europa. Um, do you have an idea of uh, how big a uh, shift that would be or what, the, what would be involved? In okay, so um, uh, one of the bets we did was that Docker Compose Sorry, sorry, sorry. The question is um, how big would be to move the infrastructure to Kubernetes? And um, so we did a bet on Docker Compose and with the hope that somehow the Docker cluster would be easy to manage Docker Compose. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> and Kubernetes is winning at the moment. So it means that uh, we have to rewrite all our Docker Compose, Docker Compose file. The good news is that the Docker uh, images are already written and we can reuse them. So this is one part. Uh, then there are two hard parts in Docker that are still difficult at the clustering level. And for clustering, uh, for Kubernetes, this is the same. Is first the network and second the storage, okay? So for the network, ideally, we would like to have an IPsec network be between the nodes. And uh, currently, Docker Swarm provides this thing, but we don't want Docker Swarm. Um, Flannel doesn't implement it. There are various pull requests, but never got merged. Uh, there are some projects around using Tink with etcd backend. This would be my guess if I would have to do it on Flannel is done to gain. But I asked uh, the CTO of CoreOS and they plan to have uh, IPsec on Flannel. So this is good news. So the network should be fine -ish. Then the last bit is uh, storage. And uh, our bet is Ceph. And uh, on one hand, Red Hat is uh, working on making Ceph working well on Kubernetes. So if you go to uh, Ceph slash Docker, there is a lot of recipes on how to run it on Kubernetes. And the uh, CTO of CoreOS told me also that uh, there is a company that is also doing a kind of operator for Ceph. So the world might be full of rainbows soon. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs>